Okay, today we're going to draw a foundation plan, and uh, this is for a Type 5 construction, uh, small house, or ADU. Uh, I have my floor plan already drawn here. Um, some modifications we're going to make. Um, we're going to go into one of our elevations. And if you've been working in the architecture template, um, you're not going to have a lot of the foundation levels that load with the construction template in Revit. So we're going to create a few that work for our project here. So you're going to have a finished floor at zero. Uh, we're going to make one more. So we're going to go to architecture level. This one, we're going to go one foot below the finished floor. So we're going to go one foot below that, bring that over then click. We're going to call this one uh, top of foundation. So this will be the top of our foundation wall. Yes, we want to rename views when that pops up. I'm going to click on the lightning bolt and pull this down so we have a little bit more breathing room here. Okay, so we have Top of foundation at minus one foot. We're going to add another one that we're going to use as our drawing. So this will be our drawing floor plan. This will be uh, at negative one foot six, so six inches below that. I'm going to draw this. Hit escape. And then I'm going to hit the lightning bolt again and bring this down. And this one we're going to call um, we're going to call this foundation plan. Okay, so we have top of foundation, our foundation plan, which will be our drawing. I'm going to make one more. This is going to be at negative four foot six. So I'm going to do one more level. And this will be negative four foot six. Once again, lightning bolt, pull this all the way down. And I'm not really making these much more clean. I'm just interested in building these levels so we have something to work off of. So this one will be top of, top of footing. And so, this foundation plan, essentially, this is what we're going to be drawing. Um, we're, we have this stem wall. We have a crawl space. We're going to be taking a cut through the foundation and looking down. So we still want to see the, the floor joists. I just want to cut through the uh, stem wall as well. So we're going to cut through that. So there will be a concrete hatch here. And then this footing you'll see is just a dashed line here and here. All right, so back to our drawing. We have, we've made all these elevations. Now you'll notice under floor plan, you'll see the drawing that we want. We want to draw in our foundation plan. So I'm going to have to do some cleanup here. Um, this is, there's a lot of entourage that I don't want to see, so I'm going to select that. Hide and view category. It's going to get rid of all the furniture and things, all the entourage that I've been adding. I'm going to hide these sections as well. Okay, I'm going to hide the rest of this. I have some floors in here which will get in the way, so I'm going to hide those. And again, I'm hiding in the view, so these aren't deleting them. For permanently from the rest of the project. I'm just hiding any rooms I have. 
just in case anything interferes. Okay. So some of this stuff. So you'll want to show, you want to leave some plumbing, uh, anything in the plumbing category, um, you can leave in there. Uh, but everything else, all the other furniture, we're going to hide. Okay, so now the next thing we have to do, we have the foundation plan. Um, again, so what we're going to be doing is building walls below our our walls. So we're, we're building foundation walls, these stem walls that will show up underneath all of this. So if I go back to my foundation plan, what I want to do is change um, the view range so that instead of cutting at four feet like a normal floor plan, we actually want to be below the um, we want to be below the finished floor. We want to be at the foundation level. So if you under properties, if you go down to view range and click on that, we're going to change the view range for this foundation plan. So the settings we're going to use, we're going to go with um, finished floor is going to be the top. We'll leave this. Um, we're going to set the cut plane to zero. We're going to set bottom to unlimited. So meaning it's going to look as far down as possible. So this is, if you ever want to look at what each of these means. There's a little diagram here that shows what we're talking about. So bottom is essentially how far down we're going to look. Yeah, I'm making it unlimited, so it's going to see everything. Same with view depth, we're going to set to unlimited and then hit OK. All right, so now we are under, under the floor, essentially. Actually, before we do that, well, no, we can do that. Let me hide these as well. I'm going to hide our nano walls. Um, so I have no idea where my, my walls are. We can use, um, we can turn something on here. So I'm going to turn an underlay on, and I'm going to use the finished floor. Actually, that's not coming in where we want it. Okay, so I was having some difficulty with the underlay, but in the end, I ended up just setting it to finish floor and to look up. So that's basically just a reference that we'll have when we're we're drawing the foundation here. Okay, so I'm gonna have I'm gonna draw the foundation now that we've set our view range to be what we want. So I'm gonna go to wall. And here I'm going to set this to foundation wall. So by default, it's 12 inches thick. We're going to go edit type. We want to make this six inches per our drawing. So we're going to go to duplicate. Always duplicate when you make a change. I'm going to set this to foundation six inches. Say OK. So we're going to have a six inch thick foundation wall. Now we have to make sure that the thickness is also set. That was just the title that we changed before. So now the structure, which is concrete, is now six inches thick. Say OK. 
And okay, so now we have a basic wall that is our foundation wall, six inches thick, and we're just going to go around the perimeter. Now, we also want to make sure that our base level and height are correct here. Um, so the base constraint, we want to be the uh, top of the footing. So that's the lowest level of our, our wall. And the base offset, zero. That essentially just told us, that just told the wall to start at this level here. Now it's, we're going to set the top constraint, which will be the top level of that wall, which is going to be here. So the top constraint, we want that to be the top, uh, top of foundation right there. And we're not going to have any offset. And we're going to come in and we're just going to draw a perimeter wall around this entire exterior. So I'm just going to draw a continuous wall. And again, it's a six inch thick wall. And I'm just going center line to center line matching my existing house. Okay. So now we have that. You'll see that there is a concrete hatch here. Um, just before we forget, let's set the drawing size to quarter inch. I can also turn off my underlay at this point. We don't need that. So I'm going to say none. So that goes away. So now we have the foundation wall for our house. We can then go back. If we look at this in 3D, you'll see that there is now a wall underneath. Now I can add a footing to the base of this foundation wall. So under structure, you can go to foundation wall, foundation here. I've already loaded one in. You may have to go load family and load this. So once you've loaded it, you can go, this is a wall foundation uh, bearing footing. It's under structure. So I can then just go in and click on each of these walls and it adds the footing to the base of it, which is really nice. Okay, so then once that's done, it's the size you'll have to modify. So I'm going to select this. Um, I'm going to select all of them. So I select one, I right click, um, select all instances, visible in view. So those are all selected and I can say edit type. So here I want to, I'm going to duplicate again. And I'm going to say the size of this is going to be 12 inches wide by six inches deep. So the width, I'm going to say one foot foundation thickness six inches. Say OK. So now it's a little more accurate in terms of the size we're looking for. So I can then go back to my foundation plan and you'll notice that it is showing up. So I have, I'm cutting through the foundation wall and I'm also seeing basically in a uh, hidden line view, I'm seeing beyond, I'm seeing the footing below. Okay. Again, referring to my sketch here, this thick line is what we're cutting through. This red line is cutting through that. And then we're looking down and we're seeing the edge of the footing out here. So that we want to show up as a dashed line. So the next thing we're going to do is set that to be a dashed line. So in visibility graphics, we're going to go into that. So that's here, visibility graphics. You can click on edit. The shortcut to this is VV. So go 
down to structural foundations. So you'll find structural foundations here. And what this is going to do, it's going to override the line so that it doesn't show up as a solid line, it'll show up as a dashed line. So structural foundations, we're going to click override. And we're going to set the pattern to be a dashed line. We can do eighth inch dashed line. Then hit OK. Now it's going to show up as a dashed line. OK, the next thing we want to do is have a girder that's going to run the distance of this. So we're going to have essentially a beam here sitting on posts that are spaced um, evenly throughout this. And then that beam or that girder is going to have all of the um, floor joists um, fastened to it. So it'll either be resting on it or fastened to it using uh, joist hangers. So the next thing we're going to do, we have to load that wood beam. So if I go to load family, so insert load family, go to US Imperial. And under structural framing, you'll find wood, dimensional lumber, and we're going to use a 4x12. So you can find that 4x12. Hit OK. So once that's in, now we have to load it. We have to add it to the project. So I can go to structure, beam, find the 4x12. And I'm going to just draw a line from one side to the other. Now this at first may not show up the way you would expect. It's just more of a structural drawing. So what we want to do is set the detail level to fine so that it shows the thickness of the lumber here. And we could either have a beam pocket for this in the foundation wall, um, or you can hang it off with a metal strap, a, a beam hanger here. Um, in our case, we'll just annotate that later. Okay, so I have the beam. Um, next, we want to add posts. So this beam is going to be resting on posts that are spaced evenly across this span. Um, so what we're going to do is go to Structure tab, go to Column. Uh, we're going to Load Family, go to US Imperial. And we're going to find under columns, we're going to find um, wood timber column. Okay, so I, let's see. OK, so I was looking in the wrong place. We're going to go to uh, Insert Load Family, go to US Imperial, and you're going to find structural columns here. So under Wood, we're going to go to Dimensional Lumber Column, and we're going to find a 4x4 four four post. Hit OK. And now we can go to architecture column and you'll see the four by four post here. So when we place this, we want, we'll just place one of them for now, select it. And we're going to say base level is going to be the top of the footing. The um, top level is going to be top of foundation. And the top offset is going to be negative one foot because we want it to rest under that 4x12 beam. OK, so let's look at that in 3D. Yeah, almost. <laughs> so we want to set this. That top offset is going to have to come down a little more. 
So we'll set the top offset to negative one foot six and see what happens. So you may have to play with that. All right, so now that we have that, I'm going to copy this across that plan. Actually, probably for, if I set that to zero, I just want it to show up in this view. All right, so now it's showing up, so I can take this and I can copy it, copy it five feet. And what I want to do, I can adjust the heights later, but I want to make sure that they're evenly spaced across this and a reasonable number. So one way to do that is to strike a dimension. So DI for short, center line of foundation wall, center line of post, center line, center line, center line, and then pull this out. And you'll see that I can set, for example, I can set this dimension here. I can set these to be equal. Um, I can, the only issue with that is these may not be perfect dimensions, but um, already this is working for us. So this will be four foot nine spacing throughout from center of wall here. Okay, so now once you uncheck equal, you'll see the actual dimensions there. And so that works for us. We're going to use that. Um, we also want to show that there, uh, well, we're also going to show that these there's a footing at the bottom of each of these posts. So we'll have a post cap at the top, and the the post is going to, basically be supporting this girder that's running across. So under structure, we can go to isolated. Yes, we want to load one. I'm going to go to structural foundations and I'm going to find footing rectangular. I'm going to hit open. Now this is massive, this isn't the size we want, so we go edit type, duplicate, and we're going to make this one by one by, uh, we'll say, six inches. So again, that's just the title. We still have to change the sizes here. So this thickness is going to be six inches width one foot, length one foot, and then hit OK. Now when we place it, you can just place it on the center. And yes, we want to place these on the bottom of the column. So Revit is notifying us correctly. So now when I go into 3D, I'll see that I have each of my posts now has a, a footing that's appropriate. And I can select these because again, these are going through that Beam, we can bring these down. I'm just control clicking and I can set this to instead of positive one, I can say negative one foot five, I think is what we wanted. All right, so now we have posts that are mid span of this. We go back to our foundation plan. So this is looking pretty good already. We can annotate this after uh, we can go. So we also want to have uh, we want to have foundation vents so we're going to have to add those in here and we want to have enough so that air can there can be cross ventilation under this floor. So I'm going to go to shaft. Actually we'll do a wall opening. 
And the way this works is it creates an opening in any wall. And you basically just draw a rectangle. Well, first uh, select the wall. So I click on that. Select the wall you want to target and then just draw a rectangle. And you won't see it in this view, but it basically just cuts the wall where you drew that rectangle. Normally you would see the rectangle as you're going, but this void is now something you can click on and you can modify the size accordingly. So for example, the width is now in this blue dimension. So I can set that to be two feet by clicking on it, like two feet, enter, and that's gonna shrink it down. The problem with the way this is cutting, if we look at this in 3D, is it's cutting all the way through the foundation, which isn't what we want. We want this to essentially be an opening that someone can crawl through. Um, this can be, you know, a vented level. So we, this is what we want. So in plan, we can also modify that. So if I select this, I can set the base offset. Um, I can set that to be whatever uh, base, you know, set whatever distance we need. So right now, since the base is the top of footing, it's it's jumping up two feet above that. So we can increase that. We can say three feet if we want. Oh, it's not even visible there. Say two foot six. Okay, and then this is the way we want to see that. So we're cutting through the wall and we have an opening here. And so try to do the same thing on the other side and we'll do this around the perimeter. Um, we're going to also add some detail lines just to show that um, as well. So I can go to uh, annotate detail line and I'm going to do a medium line showing the opening of this. So you're gonna do this for every uh, vented vent you have in the crawl space throughout the perimeter of the house. Okay, then you can add annotations, like you'll wanna annotate these corners using text, annotate, and you can say beam, Hanger, and maybe look up some a specification for the type of beam hanger you want to use or joist hanger. And next, we want to show that the span. We want to show the span of our span of our um, floor joists or our uh, TJI floor joists. So we can we can draw that. We can either draw them individually and show you know, all of them and show the spacing. The easy way to do this is to just uh, show the span as a uh, span direction. So I'm just going to draw a detail line, DL for short. And again, with medium lines, I'm just going to draw a line from here to here with an arrow like this arrow. So this is suggesting that from here to here in this whole space, we're going to have a specific type of um, spanning member. So I'm going to add text, but I don't want the leader. I just want the text. So I'm going to click and I'm going to say TJI floor joists at 16 inches on center. And I want to rotate that 90 degrees, place that here on the arrow that I created. And so you can group this, you can duplicate it. We want to do the same thing up here. Copy that up here. And just make sure that the span hits both edges. Okay, 
So now that you've done that, um, go ahead and go around the perimeter adding the vents and uh, crawl space access for the whole plan. Um, you'll also want to create a, uh, a shear wall callout for, for all of your perimeter walls. So that can just be text. We can say number one. And then we can just draw a triangle around that. So to do that, we can go to annotate, detail line, polygon, and the number of sides we'll set to three. So we can do that. There may be a symbol for this somewhere in Revit. I don't know where it is, so this is what we're doing. Make sure that's lined up. And then I'm going to select these and group them together. So you can hit the Create Group button. We'll call it Shear Wall 1. And so now I can just copy this together. CO for copy. I can go around and place this on every perimeter wall you have. CO, and then if I check multiple, that'll let me grab multiple instances. Click there, click there, and so on. All right, and then you'll choose one interior wall to be your shear, interior shear wall. Um, that could be, you know, any wall that runs uh, perpendicular to one of your exterior walls that will have run through the roof, to the roof. Okay. And so that wall can be dashed. Um, you can draw that as a detail line if you want, or um, bring it in and just kind of hide it as well. So it'll be a thin line coming in for that wall. All right. Thanks for watching.